Okay, hello, uh, boys and girls. We're back again. I'm standing underneath the uh, underneath the Chevy, and today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about drive line and off-road abilities. So, um, what we're going to be talking about is all the little critical things that uh, that link you between the powertrain and your rubber. What's uh, what what what's going to happen when you do what you want to do and put it into a full wheel kind of an operation? So we're going to talk a little bit about the Silverado, the F-150, and the Ram. They all have 4x4 capabilities. They do it a little differently here and there, but at the end of the day, all of it harkens back to a, a long, long time ago. The, the new Cybertruck, though, it's not like what we're going to show you. It's going to be entirely different. And so we're going to show those capabilities and those differences and I think you'll see that, um, that mostly what we've been stuck in is a way of doing business for a long, long time that's vastly different than what's going to be happening in, uh, in uh, 2021 or 2022 when the Cybertruck shows up. So let me give you some background. First off, my daily drive is a Jeep Rubicon. I, um, I've uh, had off-road vehicles my whole life, basically from a teenager, uh, motorcycles and, uh, and off-road vehicles all the way up till now. I don't drive much of anything else. And the reason for that is because I like the excitement. The other thing that you should uh, maybe know is that I did take off-road training. I took uh, camel trophy uh, training when I was in Britain working with um, the folks at uh, Land Rover when they were owned by BMW. So, um, but this is uh, not me. That's a French guy, but, uh, but anyway, we found this picture. I don't have too many pictures left of uh, when I was young, but anyway, this is a disco, and it's kind of like what I learned to drive on. And when you take the, the driving uh, uh, training from the folks over at, uh, at Land Rover, you really learn what a, what a, what a true off-road experience should be. It's not just splashing through the mud. It's lots and lots of things, how to ford a river, how to, um, how to basically go up a mountain that I wouldn't even ski down. So we're looking at, in fact, that's a, a fairly good story. I really uh, had never ever done what the guys at Land Rover wanted me to do. And that was to drive straight up um, a fairly steep grade. When I went up, it was tough. I was sweating, but the guy that was training me was just sitting there um, reading a magazine or something. We got to the top and he said, you only have enough for the four wheels. Don't go too fast and definitely don't go over the edge. We're gonna do something different. So he was correct. I got up there and when I got to the top, I could see around the edge of the car, but I could not see any of the ground, none, zero. The only way I could see it is if I opened up the door and looked out and that was kind of like grounds for maybe having a, change your shorts. Anyway, then he said, we're going to go down, but I want you to go down backwards. Now, I mean, there's a lot of people that can't even back up into a, into a parking space. This was really tough. Um, I had to trust the guy. He knew what he was doing. So we went up and we went back down and we did that a couple, three times to make sure that I really knew what I was doing. After we did it backwards, then he allowed me to go down frontwards. But the problem was when you go down frontwards, they've got Belgian blocks that, uh, that kind of make the, the truck go up and down. And, uh, and you really get an experience, uh, uh, again, terrifying experience on how to drive. That's the kind of thing that I'm expecting and hoping for when we get to the Cybertruck. So Camel Trophy kind of, uh, kind of driving is, uh, is what I've done in the past, what I really liked. I don't do as much of it now because I'm make, making videos all the time. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, I'm hoping that, uh, that we can show you how all these different bits and pieces come together in order to make a true off-road vehicle. Okay, so let's talk about the drive line on this extremely old uh, little map. The, the thing that's interesting is that this probably came from the 40s, but it still applies today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this system and, and we're gonna go through step by step everything that you'd normally see 
and what you're going to see in a few minutes underneath the car. So here's the engine, okay, and this is a longitudinal engine, which means that it's going north-south. Most of you are probably driving, uh, if you're driving a conventional car and it's small, it would have an east-west uh, powertrain. But this is north-south. So we go here to the engine. The engine is then connected to the transmission. The transmission is then connected to a transfer case. Now, the transfer case is sometimes called the quarterback of, a, of the powertrain. The transfer case can be engaged and disengaged. And what happens here is normally uh, that power, or always, that power is going to go back to the rear differential through a prop shaft. This one is going to be engaged and disengaged, which means that the front drive shaft, the front prop shaft, it's going to be eventually turned on and off. It goes into the front differential. The front differential then will distribute the, the power to the wheels. So let's walk underneath and we'll see what that looks like in a modern vehicle. So first off, let's look up here. This, is, um, this area here is very difficult to see, but this is where the engine is, up in this area here. In back of it is the, uh, is the transmission. So the transmission and the engine usually are dropped in at the same time. And in the case of four-wheel drive vehicles, usually the transfer case is here. So over here, you've got a couple of solenoids, and one of them is to turn the, the uh, front prop shaft on and off. Remember we talked about the rear prop shaft, that's this one over here, and that's going to the rear differential in the back. That part is ancient. This is, hasn't changed in, um, uh, I don't know how long, at least uh, 100 years. It's, like I say, old, but it still does the job. So let's go back over here. Here's the prop shaft and you can see right now that it's disconnected because I can turn this and you don't see anything else turning. So this is stationary because that solenoid is disconnected. As you move into the um, front differential, you can see here that we've got two, these are called half shafts and they come out and they're the things that drive the front wheels. So you can see as I turn this, normally in a differential, you'd see the other wheel moving, but in this case, that doesn't happen. So now, how did that happen? Well, this has uh, something that's uh, a little newer. Um, it's this black thing right here, and uh, this is called the um, front axle disconnect. So everything I've just shown you, pretty much everything I've just shown you, is, um, is missing in the, uh, in the, in the Cybertruck. Um, almost everything here that I've talked about is going to be disappearing because the Cybertruck is so radically different. Okay, boys and girls, uh, we talked about the um, differential, but now we're going to go into a little more detail. So I know that I... In, in, the, in the responses that we've got that a lot of folks are really interested in how cars work, but really don't know. So I want you to watch this wheel and this wheel, and I want you to look at that paint spot that you're gonna see. So you can see that when I turn this wheel one way, the other wheel moves in another direction. And you gotta wonder, why is that? Well, we're gonna explain a little bit about that when we talk about the, uh, how the differential works inside. Inside here, is like little magics that happen and it doesn't matter whether it's on this uh, Chevy Silverado or that Ram or the F-150 or in this case 
the Model Y. This is the diff that came out of the Model Y right here. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how they work. So let's turn this thing sideways. So what happens when you're turning a corner is one wheel, let's call it, uh, let's call that the outboard wheel on uh, my right. The outboard wheel is going to have to turn a little bit faster than the inboard wheel. And the reason for that is because the distance traveled on the outside is going to be longer than what you see on the inside. This is the little magic box that makes that happen. So here you're getting the direct drive and here you're finding that this, this little doodad right here, this is connecting to the two ends of the, uh, the shaft that goes to the right wheel or the left wheel. And this makes the wheels turn at a different rate so that you can get that, uh, that, that change, if you like, in direction. So one is going to be failing while one, or sorry, fading, I should say, and the other one is going to be uh, moving a little bit faster. So I will tell you that um, this is classified as what we call um, an open differential. There's a second that's called a limited slip differential. That's uh, for, uh, for restraining the amount of movement that you want to have between the wheels. And the last one, the locking diff, uh, that, that basically, as it implies, or as it says, is locking the rear wheels so there is no there is no uh, change between the wheel on the outboard side or the wheel on the inboard side. And the reason you're doing that is because you're going slow, you're going up basically big rocks or you're into swamp or you're into desert or you're into just having fun. Okay, boys and girls, when you talk about off-road ability, um, that's what I want right here. This is the kind of stuff that we did when I was working with uh, Land Rover, uh, working on products that, uh, that could do this kind of stuff. This is what uh, turns my crank, and uh, I love that look. And what we're going to do is a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of conversation on the unique features that are in the, uh, the Cybertruck. Things that I've already talked about, but this is the wrap up. So the first thing is a variable height. If I'm going up something that looks like that, I want to be really high. And this thing, all by itself, has got 16 inches of ground clearance. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty amazing. But when you go over and start looking at um, the comparison between the Cybertruck, the Silverado, the F-150, and the Ram, things become abundantly clear. So let's have a look. Let's look at the length. Let's look at the width. Let's look at the height. I said before that I, I thought that the, the Cybertruck was vastly different, but this is telling me that they did their homework in checking out who the competition might be. Let's talk a little bit about approach angle. Now, approach angles are uh, something, that, uh, something that guys that go off-roading are very interested in. I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, depth, but see this, 35 degrees? Uh, that's, uh, that's what I want to see. But, um, and this is kind of like what I would expect from my uh, Jeep. Okay? Uh, that, uh, and that, and this, uh, they don't compare. So departure angle, that means going downhill. <clears throat> 28 degrees. Again, same thing. I'm expecting that out of my Jeep. If we look at that over here, and over here, and over here, they all look about the same. But when we look at ground clearance, look at that, boys and girls, 16 inches, okay, versus eight, nine, and basically nine again. This is the kind of stuff that people that buy these kinds of things, these kinds of cars or trucks or whatever you want to call them. I think what this is, uh, this is, this should be called something totally different than pickup truck. This is a, um, th 
this is an off-road sport truck. This is what it should be called. And that tells me, this tells me that these are interesting, but not really a comparison. This, this product's unique. If I'm going up and down hill and whatnot, I want the lowest CG, the lowest CG is center of gravity that I can possibly get. And I want as much power as I can possibly get. So let's look at what we've got going on here. Here's a cyber truck with a single motor, 400 horsepower. Let's look at the, uh, the Silverado, the F-150 and the Ram that we have. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into a big argument about this being, uh, this is a diesel um, and this is a diesel and this is gas. But at the end of the day, I could probably get 400 horsepower, but you know what? When you have a gas powered engine, you have to rev it up to get that 400 horsepower. It has to be at, a, at the top of the possible curve that you're gonna get from power. But look at this electric. This is 400 horsepower right now and all the time. But that's with a single motor. What happens when we go to the dual motor? Are you me? 690 horsepower? And if I go to the tri motor, 800 horsepower? <laughs> we don't even need to talk about foot pounds of uh, torque and whatnot. I, I don't, I don't, I, or pound feet of torque. I don't even care. Look at that. That's the second most important thing for me to have. I want lots of power. Okay, range, okay, fine. Um, if we look at this, 250, uh, 250 miles, 300 miles, 500 miles, but it really, if you wanted to have range, here's the one you wanna buy right there. 1,000 miles. Uh, Corey told me that he'd only, he'd only had to fill his car up uh, five times a year. At the end of the day, Speed really doesn't do it for me. I don't care how fast I'm going. If I'm going that kind of stuff, I, I'm going to be kind of like, uh, well, I want to go slow. And I don't need to go 110, 20, or even 130 miles per hour. I don't care. What I'm really concerned about, if I'm going to be driving a truck like that, is, be, is, is joining the endo club. Now, if you're not a... Uh, uh, not an off-roader kind of guy, endo means nothing. What does that mean? Is that endoscopic? Ugh, let's not talk about that. No, endo means you're gonna go endo, endo, and uh, turn your car upside down, and, and it's gonna be ugly. You're not gonna be a happy guy. Endo is not what you want. I, I'm telling you, what you need to do is you need to have a look at the, um, the video. The video that's gonna show you <laughs> what happens when this thing rolls over. It rolls over and then rolls back up. That is a key feature for anybody that's gonna be off-roading. So when we talk about off-road capability, all of these things that I've just talked about, all of those come into, into play, but the one that really blew me away was the fact that this can roll over and roll back right on its wheels first time. This is not a pickup truck, forget it. This, this is the off-roading truck that everybody who's like me would like to have. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We really appreciate any, anybody who needs anything designed or redesigned. Uh, give, us, uh, give us an email at sales.leandesign.com. And again, please keep on tipping those gals and guys that are at the cashiers. They need it uh, and we need them. So anyway, have a great day and uh, we'll see you next time.